Good morning, guys, and welcome to Unique Not Different with me, Shamla. And today, once again, we have Dr. Nicholas Murat. And with this step, he's going to talk about cerebral palsy and the neurological aspect of it. So let's dive into it. Good morning, Dr. Murat. Good morning, Shamla. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So can you tell me, what is CP? Well, cerebral palsy is a, a kind of group or is an umbrella group of disorders that basically affect muscle strength and coordination. And it's basically due to damage that occurs to the immature developing brain, either before birth, during birth, or very soon after birth. Right. And what causes CP? This abnormal brain development or the damage happens for several sets of causes. And that's helped to explain the, the wide difference in the types of cerebral palsy different people have. First thing might be genetic mutations, particularly in the individual person's brain, resulting in abnormal, abnormal brain folding, abnormal brain development, and abnormal connections between the brain. Infections in mom, such as the torch infections whilst baby is being um, developed. Um, even more recently, Zika is a good example of that. Okay. Before baby is born, um, babies can have strokes on their own, which is uh, clots in their brain, or, um, which prevents blood flow to certain parts of their brain. So this can happen even before birth, during birth, or after birth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bleeding into the brain, uh, or baby infections as well. Remember last time we spoke about meningitis? Yes. Uh, or traumatic brain injury from maybe like a fall, motor vehicle accidents, sometimes unfortunately child abuse, or lack of oxygen to the brain during development or labor. And those so, are the big, big, big causes. So you, did mention, you just mentioned that it can happen during a fall or an accident. So you can get several palsy during your adult life, right? No, no, not particularly. Okay. Okay. It needs to happen when the brain is developing. Develop so that's okay. Usually before one year old. Okay. Or in under. Uh, yes. Right. And what are the, some of the symptoms of CP? They vary greatly from person to person, really. Is a lot of it can either affect your whole body, mm -hmm. primarily one or two limbs, the upper limb, your lower limb, one half of the body or the other. Mm -hmm. There's mostly problems with movement. Mm -hmm. problems with coordination, problems with speaking, mm -hmm. swallowing, difficulty walking, mm -hmm. and then there's developmental difficulties such as learning difficulties, intellectual disabilities, really bad ones they can happen sometimes, seizures, mm -hmm. difficulty hearing, and problems with vision. But most and most people have difficulties with movement mm -hmm. and coordination of that movement. Right, and I noticed that um, each and every person who has CP is vastly different. For example, I have CP, and some ideas have CP, they may be stiff and very, you know, immobile. Some ideas who have CP can walk, they call them shaky walker. Why is that? And why it, is everybody different? It all depends on because cerebral palsy itself isn't like one thing. It's not like saying you have diabetes or right. uh, tuberculosis or something. Yeah, it's exactly. a big, big, big group of disorders that are due to many different things. And if you want to think about it, it's like thinking about having a stroke. A stroke can affect any particular portion of the brain and cerebral mm -hmm. palsy can affect different areas of the brain due to different causes. Mm -hmm. So for example, some people may have the more spastic or stiff cerebral palsy which can affect mostly the motor cortex of the brain or the connections between the motor cortex down to the muscles. Mm -hmm. Some people with cerebral palsy may have more the, the kind of incoordinated cerebral palsy, which affects more the back portion of the brain. Okay. And, and certain other people may have the, the abnormal movement disorder, cerebral palsy, which affects the areas of the brain that help control like fine coordinated involuntary movements. Right. And how, how do you manage CP? That first and foremost, CP, the, the real thing to try to do is one, to try and prevent it if possible. So 
prenatal care, antenatal care is very, very important for the mom and developing baby. So try to avoid, avoid alcohol, tobacco, um, illicit drugs during pregnancy and prior to conception, mm -hmm. seeking very early and continuous pregnancy care, um, yeah. taking your maternal vitamins, folic acid and whatnot, mm -hmm. maternal vaccinations against the torch infections and certain diseases. Mm -hmm. um, and that's some of the big ones to try and prevent, but to treat it, there's no cure specifically for cerebral right. pain, unfortunately. We, yeah. Lots and lots of research is being done to try to figure out those things and to try and help the developing and brain try to combat whatever damage it's gotten to try and help it recover as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But when somebody does have problems already, you can you, you hit what a, you treat what you can treat. So for example, stiffness, muscle mm -hmm. stiffness, you can treat with med oral medication to try and reduce the muscle spasticity. Things right. like valium, diazepam, um, baclofen, even Botox injections to try and reduce the spasticity or the, yeah, Botox injections <laughs> to reduce yeah. the, the muscle stiffness. Mm -hmm. um, physical therapy plays a very, very important yeah. role. So, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of facilities available, both public and privately, for this way. Yeah, just full, for example, in like Mount Hope, we have um, a big multidisciplinary team that can help manage patients. For example, the pediatric neurologist can help identify the muscle stiffness problems and then refer them to the speech and language therapist, um, physical therapist. what their problem is. There's mm -hmm. a specific problem. Exactly. So, for example, if you have difficulty swallowing, you refer to the gastroenterologist who can maybe help with the swallowing, maybe even put in a, a feeding tube if necessary. Yeah. A referral to the bone specialist, for example, if you have contractures to try and ease those tendons and those contractures. Uh, and, and so, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. So, in terms of um, CP, right, is it degenerative, meaning as you progress? Does it degenerate or is it stagnated? Meaning, yeah. So that's a good point. So what happens with cerebral palsy is during the development or prior to development, you have one insult to the brain. And so that's a static or a single insult. But because the brain is continued developing, mm -hmm. it feels like the disease continues to progress. Okay. Even though, the disease, even though the, the disease itself doesn't progress, the mm -hmm. symptoms may sometimes tend to progress. Yes. Yeah. I know so it's that. a bit of a, a disconnect it, there. Yeah, it depends on I guess how you throughout your life, like in terms of how you sit and how you yeah, the amount of therapy you get, etc. Yeah? Yes. Right. Very good. And in terms of in closing remarks, right? What advice would you give? I know you mentioned this, right? Especially to parents, mothers who um you know, about to get pregnant, who are pregnant, etc. How should they do prenatal care to prevent it? First and foremost, um, well, like all the things that we identified before prenatal moms who haven't become pregnant yet, make sure they're vaccinated against all the things that they need to be vaccinated against from a maternal infection point of view. Um, seek pre-pregnancy care. So for example, go tell your doctor, listen, I'm trying to become pregnant um, or aim to become pregnant in a couple of months, maybe a year time. Right. Let's get our health in order, tell me all the things I need to do prior so I can get my health optimum so that when baby is developing inside the womb, it will be the best environment that's possible for baby to develop. Um, if somebody's already become pregnant, they make sure to take all the maternal vitamins, the folic acid, um, don't smoke, don't drink alcohol, don't do illicit drugs. Um, right. Try and live as healthy and balanced lifestyle as possible. And, and, and make sure and keep keep seeking the antenatal care as much as possible. Very good. I have learned so much. Seriously, I have CV and I never really went into the neurological aspect of it. So I learned so much and I know a lot, a lot of other people, especially parents who have children with CVS CV would find this very educational. So thank you so much. You want to okay? A really important thing they should parents with CV should definitely do is make sure that if they they try to access like the disability grants or whatnot for their kids, and usually yeah. that happens through um the 
the public health sector, like Eric Williams, or the child clinics in South, Eric Williams yeah. intervene. That's important. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I'm going to have you back again to discuss other neurological diseases. So I definitely look forward to that. And again, thank you. With that being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this week's segment of Unique Not Different. Until next week, as I always say, be good. Be good. Bye, guys. Bye, Dr. Mara. Okay, David. Take care.